Hello dear ones and a happy Wednesday to you all. I hope you're all well and looking after yourself, putting down your boundaries where they are appropriate and sticking to them. Remember when we are speaking our truth and communicating our truth, it is important to do so impeccably and also to do so with respect and reverence. And when people do not respect you um, and your boundaries, it's important to actually set them and remind people that the reason that your boundaries are there are for self-care and to ensure that everybody communicates in a respectful and reverent way. So today, because it's Wednesday, we're going to be looking at our journaling questions and remember how important these journaling questions are. Please do them. Um, if, you, <laughs> if you don't do the hard work, you're never going to get through these things and release all of the stuff that is blocking the energy from flowing through you um, with light and love and with ease because it's important that the energy flows through you with ease. Okay, so let's look at those questions and please remember to be aware of how you feel, what it brings up for you and how, what your body says because very often when something happens um, perhaps a certain person calls you and as soon as they do you find your heart beating in your throat and your palms are sweaty and your ears feel like the blood is rushing in them. That is an indication of how you are feeling and how your body is reacting shows you what is wrong in your spirit and sometimes of course always what is right as well. So let's look at these journaling questions. Number one, how well do you share your truth with others and how truthfully do you speak? How well do you share your truth with others and how truthfully do you speak? Do you find yourself having to omit things in order to make sure that the other person isn't offended by you speaking your truth because then you're not able to speak your truth? And sometimes that is okay in certain situations. But if it's with intimate people all the time, then you're not being your authentic self. So speaking your truth is also about being your authentic self with respect, with reverence, and being the self that you actually are instead of changing yourself to suit the needs and to fit into a box that you can't actually sort of fly. Number two, do you say what you really feel? If not, what do you say instead? Number three, do you know when it is best to say stay silent or best to speak up? And how do you know? It is also a sign of emotional intelligence to know when to keep quiet, when you've always got to read the room when you're in situations where your opinion is not needed or asked for, it may not be the right time for you just to have an audience and just talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. Very often people might not actually be interested in your opinion. So read the room and always see whether you are actually, whether the energy that you're sending out by speaking your truth, by being your authentic self is being received or if people's eyes are glazing over and they're not hearing a word that you say, then it is not really conducive to you speaking your mind necessarily. Um, and especially in work and business situations, it's not always the right opportunity to just let everything, any and every thought that comes into your mind just come out. That's also what the throat chakra does. It helps you filter the things out. Okay, so it's important to realize that and understand that. Number four, do you have trouble listening to the things others have to say? Or do you speak too much? If not, why? So as I mentioned yesterday, bear in mind that we have one mouth and we have two ears. And being able to speak your truth and ears, nose and throat are all mixed together. So your throat chakra about expressing your truth has also got to do with listening and being a good listener. Hearing somebody out, allowing them to present 
their concept to you before you interrupt them and tell them what you think that they're about to say. That is making an assumption and that's also taking things personally because then you are taking what they're saying in your mind, what you think they're going to say, and you bowl them over. And that's not very respectful. Being Allowing other people to speak their truth is just as important as speaking your own. So do hear other people out. Remember, we are here to have the human experience. And being in a human body means being not being an island and being in a community and where you fit in. Number five. Do you do what you say you're going to do? Or is it just paying lip service, as they say? How often do you do what you say you will do? Or are you just saying those things in order to placate your audience and never ever have the intention of making good on your word? That is part of being impeccable with your word. If you know you cannot make good on it, then rather don't say it. You're not pleasing anybody in any case, because if you're not going to make good on what you say, then you're going to be seen as wishy-washy, uh, as somebody who's flip-floppy and who cannot make up their mind and also isn't a person of their word. Number six, are you honest with yourself? And that is so important. Very often we tell ourselves lies um, and then we deal with the consequences of those lies. It's even worse when we tell ourselves those lies. Number seven, is integrity important to you? How do you express your integrity to others? That is part of boundaries. Um, so often we see movies uh, where people say everybody's got a price. Uh, and yes, they do, but it does depend on the choice that they're given as well. Number eight, what is your relationship with willpower? Do you have willpower? If you promise yourself that you're not going to have a chocolate tonight, do you, do you give in and have one anyway? Making promises to yourself is part of being impeccable with your word. If you're unable to keep those promises, then don't make them in the first place. Number nine, do you surrender to a higher will? Number 10, how do you express your creativity and what activities are creative for you? So those are the 10 questions for your journals. Please take the time to really do them and perhaps choose to do them when you are busy with your self-care because this is a self-care exercise and it is only for you. It's not for you to show everybody else your answers. You might have things that come up that you'd like to share with somebody and then share with them specifically, but it's not for other people's consumption. You are doing the hard work on you. And so the answers and what comes up for you when you're journaling these questions are part of your self-healing practice. And if you're sharing them willy-nilly with somebody else, then you're opening yourself to their interpretation of, your, of, of these journaling questions and of your life experiences. And before you want to really do that, you need to actually deal with them yourself first. And once you've dealt with them, then you can share it from the perspective of, look at what I've managed to achieve. Look at these things that came up and what I've managed to release and what I've realized about myself, my life, my experiences, what I've be been become. And what I give my attention to is what happens. So where attention goes, energy flows, and remember that. Okay, so that is our Wednesday check-in. Please remember, dear ones, the four agreements and the five Reiki principles. They're a very good foundation. They fit in with any and all religions, if you think about it. It's a matter of interpretation and of how you feel. Love and light to you all, and have a happy Wednesday.